Hey everybody, today's video is going to be all about section 1.8 of Luke's guide. We're going to talk about e-steps and flow rate tuning. My name's Jim, I'm a little broken, but this is the edge of tech. Like I said, today we're going to go through the e-steps and changing the flow rate. In Luke's guide, he describes the e-step as how many times the stepper motor on the extruder has to advance to push out 100 millimeters of filament. That's what we're here today to figure out, and I'm going to show you a formula on how to fix it. There are two different ways we can do this. First, the free air method, and that's what Luke prefers himself. We're going to focus on that one today. The second one is the through the hot end method, which most of us have seen other videos on already. So today, we're going to focus on the free air method, and we're going to do it right now. Let's go. Okay, for step one, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and remove the Bowden coupler and the Bowden tube from the extruder. So I'm just going to take the wrench that came with the kit. I'm going to put it on there carefully one-handed and get it a little loose. And then it should just screw right out. Just like that. And you should be able to hang it right there. So the next step is to go ahead and push the filament through the extruder and then flush cut the face, which is right here, the face uh, of the filament. So I had uh, my wife help. She pushed this up through because I can't grab the extruder very well. Um, so she pushed it up through. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab my flush cut. There we go. And flush it just like that. And that's your step two. So next on the list is to go ahead and heat up your hot end because you cannot extrude any filament without the hot end being heated up, even with the free air method. So we're going to go to touch our button here, go to control, go down to temperature, go to nozzle, and then heat that up. I'm going to stop it at 200 degrees Celsius. right around there. Just like that, now your hot end is heating up and we'll move on. All right, so now that the hot end is heated up, you can see it's 200 degrees Celsius. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and auto home. So we're gonna click the button, go to prepare, and then select auto home. So it's going to bring itself to home. In my case, I have a BL touch, so it's going to go to the center of the bed and probe. In most cases, if this is a stock uh, machine and Ender 3, it's going to go to the front left of the bed and hang out there. So then what you're going to want to do is click the button, go to prepare, go to move access, go down to extruder, and scroll down to uh, one millimeter. So what that's going to do, no matter what number this is, is you're going to add a hundred to whatever number. So mine is at 203 right now. Let's go ahead and bring it up to 303. Don't go past it and then click that button. So at this point you're extruder will start pushing out filament and I'll show you that now. So you can see the extruder is pushing out filament now. It is going to be pretty slow when you do it like this. So go ahead and uh, use your patience. It'll take a couple minutes to get all 100 millimeters out, but it's going slowly but surely. And I'm using red. Yes, so you can see it, but because it's almost Valentine's Day as well. Okay, so once the filament stops extruding, as you can see here, go ahead and take your flush cuts again and cut it just like you did the first one. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and measure the piece that you cut. Now I did this uh, three times just to double check mine, but as you can see here, um, it's kind of hard to read, but I get about 93.45 millimeters. 
Um, and I got 93 something every time I measured. So we should be good by using the 93 number. So the next step is to go ahead and find our new E-step. So we know that we told it to, we told it to extrude 100 millimeters. And we know that we got 93 when we measured what was actually extruded. So what we're gonna do is take 100 divided by 93, and that gives us our 1.0752. All right, so what we got now is the answer, 1.0752. And we're gonna take that times the current E-step. Now, 93 is the default E-step for my Ender 3 and other Creality devices. If you've changed this in the past, you're going to change this number to whatever your, your current E-step is. In my case, it's 93. So we take 1.0752 times 93, and that gives us 100. So this right here, 100, should be your new E-steps. We're going to put that right there. 100 is the new E-step. Okay, I'm going to do one more example because mine was a little bit confusing because we got 93 on the dot. So, in this new example, we're going to go ahead and take 100, and we're going to divide that by our measured length. In this example, 87. So, in our example, uh, we got 93. In this example, we're going to use 87. So, we told it to push 100 millimeters of filament through, and it gave us 87 when we measured it. So, 100 divided by 87 gives us 1.14. Nine four. So we take that answer, 1.1494, times the current E-step. In our case, default uh, Ender 3 is 93. And we get 106.89. That's our new E-step. We're going to round that up to 107. And we're going to call 107, or 107 our new E-step. So after I did the E-step calibration, I went ahead and ran it one more time just to double check my work. And as you can see here, I'm at 100 millimeters and that's exactly where we want to be. A quick note, once you do this and we finish up with this process, you will not have to do this again unless you change the extruder or the extruder gear. So once we get this done, you should be set. The only thing you'll be changing is the value of the flow in your slicer and we'll show you that coming up so the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and copy the new G code into our start G code in Kira so we're gonna go ahead and select the line we want to copy uh, just like that oh well, maybe there we go select the line we want to copy right click choose copy then we're gonna go ahead and open Kira and we're gonna to go to our printer so go to printers uh, manage printers and then we're going to click on the test printer that I created and click machine settings. So I'm going to expand this a little bit so it's easier to see. And what we want to do is put this in right below the G28 code or G29, whatever one you're using. So we're going to right under this one right there. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and right click and hit paste and that'll paste the new line of G code in. And that's going to tell our extruder um, to be 100 steps. So we just need to change that 93 to 100. And once we do that, now every time we slice a new file with this, it's going to give us 100 e-steps. Go ahead and close everything, and you're ready to slice your next file. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install your Bowden coupler and your Bowden tube, which I've already done. And I've also already fed my filament, so that's good to go. We're going to go down over here, and we're going to go ahead and go to prepare. Scroll down to uh, preheat PLA. And go ahead and preheat your PLA. I've actually already done that, so we're at 200 degrees on the hot end and 60 degrees on the bed. Then what we're going to do is I've inserted my SD card with the... Uh, cube that Luke has on his Thingiverse. I will link it below. I've sliced it with the new settings and put it on the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize my SD card. 
Then we're going to do a print from SD card. And I'm going to go ahead and choose his cube. And that's the next part of this process. When you do that, your printer will start uh, by homing and then go ahead and print a cube and we'll come back. So as you can see, it's printing the single wall cube now. And we'll come back when it's fully printed. So our cube is printed through the video magic. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and measure two points on each of the four walls. So to do that, we're just going to take our caliper and we're going to go right here. That's 0 0.31. And the next one, I got 0 0.37. And then we're going to go to the next three walls and record everything we get. And I'll be right back. Here's what we got going on now. We added all eight of our measurements. That's two from each side of the cube. And we got 3.03. .03. Then, because we're getting an average, we take 3.03 .03 and we divide that by how many measurements we had, which is eight. That gave us 3.7875. So then what we do is we take our 0.37875. We round it to 0.378, which is fine. Um, we take what our wall should have been at 0.4, divide our 3.78, and then we end up with 1.05. So then what we do is we take our 105, we multiply that by 100, and we get 105. So 1.05. Five is what we got up here. We times that times 100 and we end up with 105. So 105 will be our new flow rate or extrusion multiplier. Whatever uh, slicer you're using, it might be called a little bit different, but in Kira, it's the flow rate. So from now on, when I use this filament, I know that we're going to use 105 as the flow rate when we make anything. So the last thing we need to do is add the flow rate, the new flow rate, into Kira. So if you scroll down on the right side, you can find material and then flow. And we're going to change that to 105. Another way you can find it is go to the search bar and click in flow. Just type flow right here. It'll bring up everything with the word flow in it under the material tab. And you want to find the flow rate and we'll change that to 105. That is our new flow rate and you're good to go. So there you go. Now you have the e-steps for your printer and the best flow rate. You should be rocking and rolling. The reason why Luke prefers this method is because if you only have to do it one time. As long as you don't change anything on that extruder, you're good to go. Then anytime you get a new filament, you just print the cube, do your measurements, and write the new flow rate on the spool of filament. Then you can go through many different filaments without even changing that e-step. I hope that you learned something today and I hope it helped out. We'll see you next time. Once again, my name is Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. Please like the video, click subscribe if you want to see more, and click on the little bell if you want to be notified when the next great videos come out.